We can all fill in the gaps for those who need Poet Tainaya Winder shares her inspiration. In a lot of writing that poets do in general, mm -hmm. but um, also seen in some of your work, there's a lot of grappling with pain. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us about how that really informs uh, your process? Adrian Rich has a poem called Diving Into the Wreck. And I think that's what we poets do. That's what part of, I think, we're charged to do is to dive into the wreck, the mess, mm -hmm. the hurt, and to take the pieces of it, literally take the pieces of a broken self and put it together to create and build something beautiful in its own way for people to see that out of any hardship you go through, out of any kind of chaos, you can create a new sense of self, a new way to be. When I first got serious about writing, my grandfather had passed away, and I think just for me to process that, to make sense of it, I started to write. I loved it. It was almost like I was able to get a different insight into myself, a different understanding. You've spoken about honoring individual stories and moments in your poetry. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So I guess just a little bit about me and the way I live my life is I travel to a lot of different places. I meet a lot of different people. Um, and in doing that, I see so many different connections and something can happen yesterday that reminds me of a person from 10 years ago and an experience that happened somewhere in between. And for me, poetry, you're able to capture all of those little moments from those different scenarios and put them together mm. so you can see how they relate to each other and how they contrast. Poetry is a way of slowing down time and reflecting on the moment and letting it unfold to see some of what is there. Patrick would never say the word love. So when he volunteers to read the poem for class that day, he does so only on the condition that he doesn't have to say that word. So he reads. When he gets to that word, he pauses, looks at me, and waits for me to say it, love, before continuing. It sounds a little something like this. The saddest thing in the world has got to be when you love someone unable to provide the love and support you need. And I do it like this dramatically, perhaps to make my students laugh as I fill in the gaps you see Patrick. He is one of the most talented students I've ever had. He scores his pain beautifully on the page like he's constructing arias for operas with poetry. Patrick makes sense of things, his remembering, like his mother's drunk driving, her suicide attempts to going off a cliff with him at her side. After all, what kind of mother would want to leave her child behind? In another piece, Patrick calls himself a bird without wings. After class, apologizes for always writing sad things, but he can't help it, he says. The teacher in me tries to create reinforcing messages, like sometimes it's the sad things we need to write. In order to release, let go, break down, and cry, I tell him maybe try to incorporate music. I know it lifts me. His response, but Miss Tanea, I don't think I can sing. I say, baby, it doesn't matter whether you're on or off key. It's about honoring and using your voice. His song of choice, I believe I can fly. The next day, Patrick riffs between verses. I used to think that I could not go on. And life was nothing but an awful song. And he hits every note at the back of his throat. I can hear past anger turn into harmonious hope. And though he still won't speak it, Patrick sings it. Later he'll tell me there's a difference. But now I know the meaning of true love. Performing his piece inspires the quiet. This other girl who sits in the back of class raises her hand, says she also believes she's a flightless bird, but maybe she too can learn to rise with music. So she asks if she can share. No longer scared, she begins. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Her voice leaps off the page, her cantatas are rage, written in jagged lines to release memories, going up in a household where her mother's boyfriends came into her room at night. And it was then, in the darkness that she wanted to rise into flight, where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. But they pulled off her wings. 
As the flower de-petaled, she goes on to tell us this continued from third grade until just last year. We are in tears when she's finished. She rips up her paper, places pieces on her tongue like sacrament, thinking if she swallows the words, this simple act might save her. So I sit beside her, put a piece in my mouth too. I want her, then the class, to know that you don't have to eat your rage, pain, and sadness alone. But they don't know that I need to eat these words too to feel full, that once I lost a friend who I loved. When he killed himself, his body hung from rope like pendulum, marking the times I never said it enough. So today I make sure I speak, teach, pray, and say, love, maybe even too much. I'll play love on repeat, my love, my love, my love, my love, when my students write pieces weighted in grief. So when the flightless sing, birds fly over the rainbow, I then oh why can't we share in the experience the class joins in puts pieces in their mouths too together we can dissolve the heaviest words to turn notes into chords to create a common chorus i believe i can fly if i just spread my wings together we can all fill in the gaps for those who need help not just saying but believing in words like love is patrick a real person Yes, he is. He's a former student of mine that I had when I taught uh, creative writing at the University of Colorado's Upward Bound program. Can you talk a little bit about your, your creative spark and your, your inspiration for writing? When I thought about Patrick not being able to just say this word love, mm -hmm. it still sticks with me and resonates with me every day. Like, how can a person not be able to say love and how mm -hmm. do we as other humans relating to this person affect that? Can we help um, you know, revolutionize our sense of love for ourselves and other people so that everybody can say it. There was a moment my first summer teaching the writing course, um, you know, young teacher not really knowing what I was doing, mm. probably giving two intense prompts, which I probably still do to this day. <laughs> there was a moment when everyone was going around sharing their, their narratives and their stories and seeing them relate to each other and connect with those spoken stories. I just felt a moment that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in the universe. Mm. And I had never felt that before. But I think once you find what you're meant to be doing in the world, that these different doors open for you and you're supposed to go through them. And when you're doing that, um, you're happy. What, in your estimation, is the job of the artist? I don't feel it is a job if you love it. It's more of a, a call something you're meant to do, and not everybody gets that call. I think my call as an artist is to show the value in sharing stories, and that a spoken story is more powerful than one left unsaid, one unshared, one unspoken. And in sharing, you're creating all of these connections and ripples that you won't always see through till the end, but putting that out into the universe, I think, is a really powerful gift. Mm -hmm.